Hello everyone, welcome back to Advent of Code. Today we are doing day three and I have failed. Didn't take very long for that to happen. I must say I found day three more complicated than the others and I'm slightly worried about where we're going with the level of difficulty considering that number three was already a bit more challenging. At least for me it was challenging because it was regex and I hate doing regex. Since this one was a tough advent of code, I have my plus sheets for emotional support. This is Java and this is Ziggy. And I also have Vicky, my cat lamp. Today's advent of code is called Mull It Over and it takes place at a shop in the North Pole. The computers are broken because the memory is compromised and it is our job to clean up the memory and make the program of the computer work again. And it seems that the goal of the program was to perform multiplications between digits, so we need to find multiplication instructions among the jumbled up data. And that is the first challenge. So each valid instruction looks like multiplication of x and y, and this is kind of like the pattern that we need to find in the data. So to solve this, I used Python and I used regex, as I mentioned. I'm just going to show you guys. This is how the input data looks like for day three, something like this. And then somewhere among this data, we see these patterns of the multiplication. And those are the ones we need to find. And then we need to execute the multiplications and add up the sum of all of these multiplications. So this is the solution that I came up with. First of all, as per usual, I write a little function to read in my input file, which I'm calling down here. Then I pass this input into the function sum multiplications, which is the function that I wrote to answer part one. I created a regex pattern to identify the multiplication pattern. So basically the mul open parenthesis x, y close parenthesis. But I went a step further even, I decided to directly extract the numbers or the digits from the pattern instead of returning the pattern itself. And I was able to achieve this by making some slight modifications to the normal pattern to find a string. You can usually find this type of information on like normal regex websites. I created a variable total and I set it to zero so that I can add up the sums of the multiplications here. And then I loop through every element in my memory. For every element in memory, which is basically every row, I call regex.findAll and I use the pattern to find all of the digits from the multiplication pattern. And this variable will basically be a list of tuples because this will return the numbers in tuples. And these tuples will have the x and y numbers that I want to multiply to each other. So from here onwards, it's quite easy. I just do for x and y in my multiplications list. I want to multiply every x and y and add this up into my total variable, which is what I'm doing here. And then at the end, I returned the total. And then I got to part two and I started crying because in part two, we have new instructions. In part two, we have sort of keywords which will enable or disable our multiplications. If in the data we find a do, that means that all the multiplication patterns which we find after this, this pattern of the do will be enabled and they should count towards the sum of the multiplications. However, when we find the don't string, Every multiplication pattern we find after should be disabled and should not be considered for the total sum. By default, at the start of the file, all of the multiplications are enabled. Once again, considering the updated instructions, we need to sum up all of the multiplications and provide that number as an answer. My idea to solve part two was to basically filter out the don'ts, leaving only the do's, and then execute the multiplications on the do's. The problem is that I didn't really reach a right answer, so something's not quite right with my code and I can't figure it out. I thought it was correct. I even went through it with the debugger and it seemed to be filtering out everything correctly, so I have no idea what's wrong with it. And then to be fair, I just wanted to go to sleep. Basically for part two, I created a function, sum multiplications activation. This function does the same thing as we did for part one except that we filter the memory first before we pass it into as an input into the function. And this is where it got interesting. So to filter the data, I created an empty list of filtered memory, and then I loop through every row of my data. And every row in my data, I want to split it by the word do. This line of code here will basically return a list of all of the different segments of code where it splits it based on the do. And then when you have these separate, you do a second split on the word don't. However, when you have a word don't, I guess you only want the beginning, like the first set of data. You don't want the ones that come after the word don't. 
so I only consider the first position of the output from this array and this is what I add into my filtered memory so that I only have the ones which should be considered. This is what I thought would do the trick but turns out it didn't. <laughs> that is all I did for day three of advent of code. I am a failure and yeah I would love to know how you solved part two so that I can get my star. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow for another advent of code. Bye!